Our top story this half hour, Louis Khrev from the Elite Star Africa says the apartheid government allowed a handful of grocery retail giants to create empires and monopolize the market. This emerged as the Pretoria leg of the Competition Commission's public hearings in the grocery retail sector got underway. EST Africa Managing Director Louis Khrev lashed out at the big retailers setting up shop in townships. Khrev says the big retailers are damaging the township economy by forcing smaller traders to shut down. Stakeholders and interested parties made submissions at the public hearings. The sector came under scrutiny after MassMart, which owns local companies such as Game, lodged a complaint with the commission. MassMart alleges the retail giants blocked rivals by means of exclusive shopping center leases. The commission is investigating features in the grocery retail sector which could prevent, distort or restrict competition. Pick and pay spa as well as um, Woolworths have made submissions. The only um, um, uh, a supermarket chain that has not made any submissions in, in respect of the terms of reference and the statement of issues that we had issued uh, is uh, ShopRite. However, having said that, we have sent, um, uh, we have had dealings with them. We have written to everyone, uh, all stakeholders, including ShopRite themselves, and we do know that they will be making their submissions in response to those. And I've also, I've also been made aware that they are now, they will now participate at the hearing as well. The big four, ShopRite, Pick and Pay, Walmart, Spa, and to a lesser extent, were allowed to build up retail empires in South Africa, keenly protected by the government of the day. And they went unchecked. They were given the prime land. They had access to the prime land. They had access to the prime spaces. And they had government protection at all time. Townships in return housed, housed millions of people with very little, if any, trading activity happening inside it they've over the years have grown so strong has got so much buying power that when they move into a township the the local the local stores and the local uh, uh, retail stores can offer no opposition to them they literally just simply roll over the township grab every available rand that is available to be spent and that comes to them and there's and the and the normal independent retailer mm -hmm. and independent wholesaler and spaza store has got no answer to that. It means that a large amount of independent stores will just simply have to close down unless those stores are given exactly the same benefits that these big four has got. The buying power of the big four retailers have become so big that I sometimes feel that the suppliers are actually uh, uh, simply out wrestled by them and that somehow there should be a control that's in place Somehow there should be an ombudsman where whoever feel aggrieved with a specific situation, a request, a demand should be able to go there and seek relief from that. The Competition Commission is probing several key areas in the grocery retail sector. Firstly, the impact of national supermarket chains and the expansion on the informal economy found in townships and rural areas. The impact of buyer power or informal economy or township economies and the impact of large retailers' long-term exclusive lease agreements in shopping malls and the nature of the so-called loyalty schemes that large retail grocers use for customers. Managing Director for Elite Star Africa, Louis Griff, uh, asked how big retailers can say their presence in townships has little impact on the small and independent traders. He says informal traders are now getting better investment by renting out their shops to foreign traders. And Griff says it's very important that the inquiry takes place as we live in a country where 14 million people go to bed hungry every day. Currently, ShopRite, Pick and Pay, Spa and Woolworths own the lion's share of the more than 500 billion rand grocery retail market. At the hearings in Cape Town last month, entrepreneurs said big operators in the sector thrive by making it difficult for small businesses to operate and run successful ventures.
Joining us on the line is Valshia Khekwana, a National Black Business Caucus. And in studio, we have uh, Christo Yube, agricultural economist. And on the line, we also have uh, Zama Gambi. He is the secretary for Buy Black SA. Tony Modise is a market commentator. To all our guests, good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. As always at home, the lines are open 11 We'll start in studio with Mr. Yube. Good evening to you, Khuyanant, and welcome. Khuyanant. Good evening. Okay, and I put it into perspective in terms of how, especially we ill at ease to deal with the issues of the past, but how those still permeate in today's markets, especially in various sectors such as retail and grocery sector. I think, first of all, we see un unintended consequences happening in, in, in this um, environment, and that's a phenomena that um, no one anticipated when, when the apartheid regime um, or when we uh, uh, actually liberalized in, in the total system. Now, there is huge, huge concentration, but <clears throat> on top of that, the retail, the grocery stores see that we get food, we have food uh, supply, sufficient food supply in our system. Last year we came from a very huge drought, and with that there was still enough food at affordable prices, although we saw that uh, food inflation skyrocket, it's busy coming down. Um, and that, that is a thing that we also need to understand. And why can small, smaller guys not compete in the, in the system? I first think one of the main issues, these guys got the whole string of networks around them. Um, and then they got economies of scale also working for them. Then they squeeze suppliers relatively um, in, in certain instances that, that these suppliers just cannot keep up with the demands of some of the of some of the retailers, but the retailers who concentrate retails is not bad only on the one side. They supply food, and so they supply, so they supply food at, at affordable prices. That is what we also need to bear in mind. Mm. And what will the intended consequences, unintended consequences be, let's say after the, um, is, after the inquiry of the Competition Commission is done? Um, I'm not sure. We must wait and see what happens. All right. On the line is Amma Gambi. He's the secretary for Buy Black SA. Good evening to you, Mr. Gambi. Uh, just tell us what Black, uh, Buy Black SA intends to do in order to create a more conducive environment environment for small players to participate in the mainstream economy. Good evening to see indeed and to all our viewers. <clears throat> As by Black South Africa we've realized that government has got good policies, but it is difficult for them to work with private sector, especially in monitoring and evaluation. Uh, an example of those policies you might look at is the charters, procurement policies, enterprise development, your black economic empowerment, your triple PFMA, and the big business being colluding with each other. So one of the things we have, we have decided to do, we have decided to set up a Buy Black South Africa to work both with the private sector mainly, and also to assist the government so that private sector can be able to work with government. Uh, mainly to advise just the private sector how to work with government and promote enterprise development as well as promoting just a business or transparent support. There's some time where you find that the private sector, it is difficult for them to, um, they want to retrench because of some challenges, but they don't know how to go about it. So as by Black South Africa, we have advised them of that. But also set up some local municipal cooperatives in each and every municipalities so that we can be able to work with them in terms of making sure the companies which are working within that proximity the district, a lo local municipality. They can work with the, both the private sector as well as government. Please stay on the line, Mr. Kampi. We have Tony Modise, a market commentator. Tony, thanks so much for your time. I mean, getting the uh, shopping centers in the township at, at, at then sounded like a good idea, but of course we know that the consequences had led to spaza shops and uh, smaller vendors uh, to be affected. I mean, do, do, would, do, would you say that the township economy, in a sense, is lost to the big players? Um, precisely, Cindy. Um, you know, when, when it comes to the retail line of business, um, this business really needs to be able to promote efficiency, adaptability, and development to the... Tony, you still there? All right, uh, we try and get hold of Tony again. Uh, can you hear me? 
All right, we'll have to get back to him. Mr. Uh, uh, Hubert, so how then do we remedy this? Because it has been 23 years of democracy, and we talk about an inclusive economy or growth economy where equal opportunities are shared uh, by the majority of South Africans. We know that this is very skewed to the, uh, the, the monopoly. So how creatively can smaller players still work within the current legislative framework? I think it's important also to understand what's going on in the value chain. Um, to the, we need a lot of um, initiations, we need a lot of programs. Um, as the previous guy called uh, mention of uh, Buy Black S South Africa, we need maybe preferential procurement programs. I know it's also from the small scale farmers or the black farmers. There is such programs going on. Um, but how successful they, they will be at the end, that's the big question to be asked. Um, and I know also some of the metro metropoles um, brought in certain programs to see how they can develop or initiate further, further um, businesses, especially on the black side, and to get that transformation issue over, over into the system. What we need to understand when there will be um, a certain initiative, it will cost money. And the question is, where will this money come from? We are already sitting with a poor um, consumer side where we're talking of around about 14 million people going hungry every day. And that is some of the big concerns that, we, that, uh, that, that, that we're sitting with. Um, and as the market forces is talking, you can feel it, but you cannot see it. Um, but the big issue, how do you break it? It's not so easy. Mm. No, I agree that it's a very complex issue that we're dealing with. We have a caller, Kenneth in Sanin. Good evening to you and thanks for joining us. Hello, Cindy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Cindy, you know what? Uh, the, the, the problem that we're facing here is uh, it's, it's serious. Like these retail stores, uh, there's nothing uh, problem on it. reason it's being, look, if ShopRite opens in the villages, it's good because the guys that are operating on the villages, some of them, they're selling rotten stuff. Some of them, they're selling things that are not SAB approved. Some of them are manufacturing things that uh, customers are buying, consumers are buying, are eating, are sick. And then the government is there. For example, if you are there in Gauteng, there's people who are working on the health and safety. There's people who are working on the food that have been expired. There's people who are working on the things that are not registered in SA. So, but they're not doing their work. So, I think the retail stores like ShopRite, Pick and Pay, box and so on, if they open small shops in a rural area or township, they're doing good because they're giving us things which is SAB approved. All right, Kenneth, uh, talking about the quality of the produce that uh, retailers afford people in far-flung places. Mr. Gampi, just back to you. We heard Mr. Joubert talk about the difficulty in dislodging these very sophisticated, well-entrenched networks, uh, be it uh, manufacturing, distribution, retail, wholesale, the, the the whole shebang. So in, in terms of uh, Buy Black SA, you started with a, a demonstration in uh, Durban uh, to try and compel the towing companies to transform. But how do you re realistically achieve the black economic uh, imperatives of ownership, control and management? Thank you, Cindy. As I've said, we're, we're using both models, the carrot and the stick model. Um, the, the, the tow truck systems, what we've realized is that, you see, when your car, you are involved in an accident, the people who are picking up the car is not black. And then they take them to a white-owned, for example, um, a panel beater. So all that value chain doesn't benefit your BE, especially the SMMEs within the towing truck industry. And that is something which has happened even, you remember the story about Tiger Woods, we were calling about bread. You find that the small uh, SMMEs were involved in, in the bakery industry. They don't benefit from that. Right now, we've got shopping centers throughout in the country. What has happened to those other shops which were in the township, your black chains and others? All of them, they're fading away. They're dying a natural death. So as by Black South Africa, what we're saying, we're saying that no shopping center must be set up in the township without the benefit beneficiary of the community within that. There is no mine which must be set up at the Skukuni area without the benefit of the community of Skukuni. So with, with the tow trucks, what we, it was just one of those. We've also done with APSA. We've done with many different companies. Uh, but what, what, what we're saying with the tow truck is that 
that value chain, it must benefit also the SMMEs within the black industry. So last week in Deben, and then about 200 towing trucks, and then they blocked the road to say, listen, guys, hear us. Teleshow and different insurance companies use us also as SMMEs blacks for that. That was a stick model which we have done. But before the stick model, we also used a carrot model where we are saying that let's advise them. We set up some breakfast and gala dinners with different uh, private sector, and we share with them how to advise them how to work with government in order to claim the money they are uh, contributing towards the skills development and enterprise development. So we do those breakfast show and gala dinners with different ministers and different MEC throughout the country. All right, please stay but on the line, Mr. Gampi. Sorry to uh, interrupt you. We have a caller, Ludia, in Soweto. Good evening to you, and thanks for joining us. Good evening. How are you, ma'am? I'm very well. How are you? I'm good. Mm, what's your comment or question? Hey, ma'am, I just want to know that why is this coming up now? And by the time they were building this mall, like Maponya Mall, you know, Jablani Mall as well. Why this small as Paza Shop and then this small uh, other businesses were not interested in being allocated in this mall? Because right now there is nothing that we can do. Woolworth is giving us quality food. Woolworth is giving us a more often, you know, special. They check the the kind of the expired page. You will never find anything from Woolworth that has expired. They do check their expiry date and they do they do and uh, and kind of give it to their their um, uh, staff who sell by date. You know they call it sell by date. You know mm -hmm. they don't sell those to the to the community. You know. All right, Ludia, thanks so much for your call. Just a, a question in terms of how the informal sector, as it were, can coexist with the monopolies and the big conglomerates. Well, <clears throat> on the on the one side. Um, we need to understand if uh, these guys is uh, <coughs> sorry on the one side we need to understand that if a small guy entering the market there is initial cost in in in, in that system and <coughs> plainly looking at what the big guys is doing let's say for what we have just said what Woolworths is doing provide a product with quality on the market um, uh, give the customer at the end a huge um, how can I say confidence in, in, in what's going on? And that is what we, what we also need to understand that maybe we, we will give th some of that away um, if a, let's say, a small scale guy cannot keep up with the quality and also the support that he needs in the system. I believe that, 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 they, need to, to, that they need to be more talks with the supermarkets, the big supermarkets, and see if, they, if, if there isn't a golden way around everything and get, get the black economy in the small, in the townships going. But then we also need to understand that at uh, um, the market forces, we will, the consumer going buy his good, obviously goods, he's obviously going to buy where he gets the most affordable price and the quality of it. Mm. And then the other issue of food security that we haven't addressed really. Um, we need to understand that food security is the main pillar that food security, uh, food security is starting on is first of all affordability, then we're looking at availability, and then we're looking at accessibility, and then also the, the nutritional value, which plays a huge and important role in, in the total system. Yeah, Mr. Yobe, just please hold that thought. A lot is calling us from the Eastern Cape. Good evening to you, Molo. Uh, Buddhi, and welcome to ANNC. Uh, hello, most unfortunately, I, I'm not present. I do stay in the Eastern Cape. Okay, so how yeah. what was your comment or question, Lot? Okay, uh, I just wanted to say, you know what, these people are so entrenched themselves, you know, like uh, even they've even taken over, like in the liquor industry, whereby, you know, we literally can do anything. You, you know, they've broken down all our small structures whereby we want to uplift ourselves and i'm very glad that this sort of like it's, uh, this inquiry sort of like leads to uh, uh radical transformation which we really need i just wanted to say that thank we you appreciate it thank you so much manir lot uh, calling okay, us from you. the western cape and we have tony modise back with us an economist uh, tony i mean with the current legislation do you think we need more enforceable laws that will drive the radical econo economic trans uh, transformation especially in light of the sunset clauses and 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 all other hurdles that prevent a true uh, coherent or rather egalitarian society um, precisely, precisely, Cindy. What is needed is 
Um, basically, what, what these people are doing, they are gatekeeping the market. So technically, this is limiting um, the economy in terms of its growing as well. Because, I mean, competition really, uh, I mean, provide development to the economy, provide consumer as well with competitive prices, and they give us both, uh, I mean, choices to products. So if, if um, the retail giants go to buy less, and sell at their own competitive prices. And the guy that is um, having his, his puzzle shop or his supermarket in the, in the township is not really able to, to, to survive because he's buying at these prices that everyone is buying at, but he's not getting value for his money because of the prices that he's selling at. He needs to compete with these guys. These guys are really becoming unfair to the market because they're getting yeah, Tony, I'm sorry we're going to have to let you go. Your, your line is terrible. I will continue very briefly with Mr. Gampi. Just in the how the system discriminates still to the smaller players, uh, and yet the established businesses are allowed uh, by law and encouraged to participate economically in townships and rural areas. Where is the creativity in establishing uh, township economies from, from scratch? Or are we looking at uh, franchising what is already existing? Uh, if, if, if you look at it uh, in Gauteng, for example, Cindy, we have managed successfully to implement township revitalization program, where we know that uh, from the government perspective, government will secure most of their services, 30 to 40 percent of their services from the township market. But think about it. If we can do this in all provinces, we have got township revitalization program. It would be good. But we need to prepare then the SMMEs in those townships so that they can sell quality goods. So that's what the Buy Black is doing. We have approached the BE Commission and we have asked to partner with them so that we go out throughout the country and we prepare our SMMEs in different provinces so that the same thing which is happening in Gauteng, it can happen also there. Because, uh, for example, if you go to Venda, in Venda there is a fruit and veg market in Venda. What we were saying with the MEC of agriculture there to say, let the fruit and veg, veg and vendors supply the markets like your Zimbabwe, like in the nearest areas in Maputo, so that people they can buy food from there. But we don't want eggs from vendor, which is being eaten in vendor. If you find that it's coming from free state, as if there are no chickens in vendor. So as we said, the agri um, agri parks uh, in different. Um, um, provinces. We also make sure that in those agri parks we have got uh, these markets for the SMMEs, which we have. So what I'm trying to say is that we need to find a way of opening up some markets with private sector, so that private sector can be able to work with government in terms of making sure that private sector, they, they promote SMMEs, local, localization of markets, and also they promote the empowerment of where they are doing some businesses. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. That's Mr. Zama Gampi, the Secretary of Buy Black SA, still in studio, wrapping up with Mr. Chris Ube, agricultural economist. Is it going to take a uh, mass mobilization in terms of the sheer numbers uh, of uh, black consumers to say, look, uh, it's about time that uh, retailers and all other sectors are compelled to tell us who they procure from uh, in terms of services and goods to ensure that transformation takes place? Very difficult question. Um, as I previously said, I think there's a golden golden way between what's currently happening in the market and uh, in terms of small scale, pre uh, not producers, small scale retailers, and then the concentration concentration side that we that we have. I think they, we need a lot of talkings, and we need and and I also believe that not everything is bad. Just quickly to refer back to the to uh, what what we talked about currently. If you're looking at the informal sector. Um, which is part of the small-scale retail side. Um, more than or closely 50% of the egg industry belongs to the informal sector. So there is certain stuff in the, in the market going on. Um, and I believe that if there can be a, a midway or golden way, uh, th then it will be good. And I think there, there's a lot of talks necessary. I think what the Competition Commission is currently doing is fantastic work. Um, but yes, we also need to all understand the unintended con consequences that can happen in the market.
All right, Christo, we're going to leave it there. Thanks indeed, Christo Yubert, agricultural comment, uh, economist, Tony Modise, market commentator, and Zama Gampi, secretary for Buy Black SA. And you at home, thanks indeed for calling in as well. We take a quick head break. We'll see you shortly.